again. How are you doing today? Hope you're having a fantastic day. Today we're talking about the Sony 200 to 600 millimeter lens. I still see a lot of people asking, is it a good lens for wildlife photos and video? So let me take you to somewhere special to show you how this lens performs. Good morning. Good morning, how are you? Good, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Have a lovely you. day. Thank you. Bye. And we are in. And what better place to test this lens than here? Kruger National Park. Now this is a place that the Sony 200-600mm lens was designed for. Wildlife and birds running wild and the African sun changing through the day. This is going to be a real life test for this lens. Now I'd just like to note at this point, I'm going to sit in the corner and on the screen I'm going to display the footage from the 200 to 600 mil lens as it comes out of the camera. The photos and the video is not edited in any way whatsoever. There's no colour lux, it's literally the native straight out the camera. So you can actually see the genuine results before any editing is done and you can evaluate for yourself whether this is a good lens for your needs. Let's start with focal length and the differences of perspective it gives you. Here's a nice warthog family busy foraging and one of them obligingly poses for me. Starting off at the full 600, we're zooming back to the 200, so you can see that difference. And for the birders, here's a forktail drongo. Starting at the 200, zooming into the 600 before he flies off. And finally we've got a vulture. And again, I've gone down this to all the different things. So you've got 200, 300, 400, 500, and finally 600. So this gives you an idea that the range that this lens can provide for you. Now this brings me to my next point, and what I consider the weakest point of this lens, close focusing. Now to be fair, this lens is not designed for this. It's a telephoto lens. It's meant for photographing distant subjects. But while I was there, this beautiful little squirrel came hopping up closer, 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 until he was too close to focus. <laughs> However, these guys, now the, uh, these are perfect poses, showing how you can zoom in with a big lens and fill the frame. This lens is definitely at its best at the 400 to 600 mil range, and I found the sweet spot for the aperture at about f8. Next up is focusing speed. Now, this will vary a lot according to the amount of light you go around. As you get less light, this lens will struggle a bit more, but in moderate to good light, while not as fast as say the 100 to 400 f4 or any prime lens, it still is fast and it holds focus well. Here's a shot of a vulture, which I spent ages waiting for fly away, to fly away. Eventually, he did. Now, as he flies away, unfortunately, through the bushes, so I don't get a nice clear shot, the lens loses focus, but then it regains it and grabs it and holds it as it flows through the, the, uh, the foliage. Next up is a photograph. Now this is a beautiful little bead, a small fast little bird eating and snapping insects out of the air. Now combined with a fast shutter speed and correct focus mode, the lens caught this beautifully. Now how about shooting into that bright African sun? First, here's a silhouette against the sky, looking up, beautiful blue sky, focuses very well, uh, nice and dark, nice and sharp. Next is a silhouette of a monkey in a tree. Again, lovely detail. Now we're looking straight up and here we've got an eagle flying above us. Again, it captured this well. I tracked it, the, the lens was smooth, fast, coped very well with this, beautiful pictures. Now for something a lot more tricky, shooting almost directly into the sun. As I was driving around, I found, or oh, saw in the distance, some bee eaters nesting in a river, uh, in a river bank. I couldn't drive any closer because you have to stay in your car. So I parked as close as I could, but it was still a long way away and almost straight on into the sun. But it produced a lovely backlight against the wings. 
but very difficult subject to, for um, a lens to focus on. So here's the first few photographs. Oh, and in addition to that, there was some savannah between me and it, just waving, just to confuse the focus a little bit. So this was a combination of autofocus and manual focus on uh, these shots. And as you can see, the photos aren't brilliant. It was a long way away. If I'd have been a bit closer, I could have got a little more detail. But the photographs are not blisteringly sharp. It, it's not good in this situation. Same with the video. Um, the video does show the interaction of all the birds going to and from. But it looks slightly soft. That is partly the effect of shooting in the sun. But no, very few lenses shoot well into the sun, especially telephotos. So as I'd say, if you can move and get another angle, avoid shooting into the sun for this light, unless you're going for particular, if you can get closer and you get a bird coming across the sun, you can be really beautiful. Um, but I would say this was its weakest sun direction. All the others it handled perfectly, including reflective um, water, where this lovely hippo, which I manually focused on, popped up beautifully to say hello to us. Now to filming and photographing wildlife that is further away, like these two giraffes strolling along through the savannah. The lens does well, but the technique does not play to the lens's strengths. The animals are in focus, but at that distance, creating dimension is difficult with this lens, with no foreground to give any perspective or background bokeh to make the animals pop. This is good, however, for showing animal behavior, like these two impala. It does work well for photos, allowing you to include some of the habitat and environment while focusing on the bird or animal. So is the Sony 200-600mm lens good for birding and wildlife? In short, yes. There are a couple of weaknesses. The need for good light or a high ISO to keep those shutter speeds up. And it is at its sharpest at the 400 to 600 mil range, which is when, why well, you bought a lens like that. So that's actually a good thing. For a lens capable of 600 millimeters, when used correctly, this is an excellent lens, especially for birding. Just play to its strengths. Good isolation range, smooth internal zoom, fast focusing and crisp, clear images. If you have any questions, Drop a comment below or DM me in my Instagram. That'll come up on the screen somewhere here. Uh, next, I will be doing a similar review with the Sony 100-400 to lens. Again, out in the Kruger National Park. So I look forward to seeing you then.